Hey man, it's me, Kevin Smith. Welcome to the Grow Tent, everybody. You have found the best growing channel on YouTube, man. The place where we simplify the approach for you so everyone can learn how to grow. We make it so simple, even I can understand. So I'm going to listen and learn right now. Woo! What's going on, guys? Welcome back to the Grow Tent. We got a great episode for you today. I'm GT, and the question we had for today is how do you know when it's time to feed? Uh, I thought it was a great question, and I thought, you know, we've probably done a video on it in the in the past, but I thought it'd be a good refresher. And so we're going to talk about that today. But first, as always, guys, if you haven't joined our Patreon yet, remember to check that out. There's a link to it in the video description from description below please remember to like comment subscribe all that cool stuff one of the things two of the things all the things whatever here's a commercial from mars hydro real quick and then we're gonna get this episode started that kind of cool stuff guys you're looking for any kind of new light new tent new whatever check out mars hydro this is actually the second way the channel makes money it's not as much as the patreon but it's still uh, a nice little bump uh if you use the code <laughs> GT. Whenever you check out, you will uh, we will get a nice kickback, and you will get a nice discount at checkout for any kind of new lights, new tents, new vans, etc. Mars Hydro pretty much makes anything you could want for your tent. They pretty much make uh, to help you grow. Uh, they've got great products. We've been using them for years. They've been the main chance supporter of the channel since we had only 500 subscribers. They've been a, a supporter of the channel and a sponsor. So thanks again, uh, Mars Hydro. Please remember to use the link in the video description below. Use our code, get a discount. We get kickback. Much appreciated. All right, that's enough. Okay. Woo! All right, guys. Serious talk time. How do you know when to feed? Uh, so it's a great question. Uh, it has a multitude of answers depending on the media style that we're growing in. Obviously, this answer would be different if we were in DWC or Hydro or cocoa or soil. Uh, cocoa and soil are, are going to be pretty close, but then again, it'll depend on the kind of cocoa you're going with. So today, I think we'll focus on uh, like uh, more of the starter or the beginner uh, grow medias. We're, we'll focus on cocoa and soil because um, they have slightly different answers uh, for the two, and then it'll be changed just a little bit further depending on the kind of cocoa or the kind of soil that you're running with. But let's just start with soil. Um, the question is, how do I know when it's time to feed? Um, and if you're growing with soil, especially if you're growing with pre-amended soil, like we recommend here on this channel, uh, then it's going to be a little bit different than if you're going with something inert, like just plain cocoa that wasn't pre-amended. So whenever I am going to see uh, whenever I'm going to need to feed a plant, what you have to remember is if you're growing in pre-amended soil, you are technically feeding the plant just because you're not grabbing your bottle of liquid nutrients and pouring it in. What is on that? Oh, it's weed. <laughs> A little tapping down on it. Uh, uh, just because you're not physically pouring the liquid nutrients in doesn't mean that there's not nutrients in there. That's one of the reasons that that like uh, fox form soil is more expensive is because it already has the nutrients in it. It is pre-amended. So don't think of it like, oh, I haven't fed these plants in three or four weeks. You, ha you are feeding the plants. It's just, that's why you bought the more expensive soil. The food is already in the soil. All right, so don't think of it as that you're not feeding. You are feeding, you're just not adding a second step because you bought the mix that was already in there. Uh, but generally, let's say you did buy the Fox Farms and let's say you're like, okay, well, I, I bought the Fox Farms. Now, how do I know when to feed? Okay, so the feed's already in there. And for a normal size plant or a plant that is uh, for that size of the bucket, let's just say we have a, oh, let's say we have our, uh, our one gallon pot here and that's not really big enough we have our one gallon pot and then we have our appropriate size plant that we just planted into our one gallon pot here <laughs> i should have got my connects out and we have our one get one get this is our appropriate size plant for just transplanting here i know that an appropriate size plant in a one gallon pot there's about three weeks worth of food ish in here um Whenever you transplant into a new, oh, this plant, let's just say it just came out of a solo cup and we put it into our one gallon. It's about three weeks worth of food before we think about starting to feed or, or instead of putting liquid nutrients in here, we could always up pot them into, from go from one gallon to a three gallon. Once again, we're not, not feeding them because when we put them from the one gallon with one gallon of soil in here and we move to a three gallon pot, 
with now three gallons of soil. Uh, that's new food. That's, you know, the, the soil is still pre-amended. So when you put them into the new pot, you are feeding them. You're just not adding liquid nutrients to where is, let's say we were doing this with cocoa. We would feed on a feed, water, water, feed schedule. Whereas with the soil, it's basically a water, 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 because we're transplanting as the plant gets older. But let's say we kept the plant in this. Let's say we started, let's just say this is now a three gallon. Um, Princess GT made this for me, so don't mind the, the cute puppy stickers that say uh, daddy on them. So this is now a three gallon pot and we just, we started our seed in here and now it's growing. And we're never going to transplant out of this. We're just going to grow it in a full, you know, we're going to grow it in here the entire time. This is trash. Focus, GT, focus. I seem like the getting distracted easily by all this stuff that's on my desk. And we're back. Phone call. Sorry. <laughs> but we're back. Okay, so where were we? Damn it. It's been like 20 minutes and now I've lost track. Anyway, so if we're going to be transplanting all the time, then... Every time we transplant, which is generally, you'll find that you'll be transplanting about every three-ish, maybe four weeks, depending on you as a grower. But generally every three weeks, we're going to be putting them into new soil, which means you were going to be feeding them uh, slow-release dry amendments because the amendments are already in the soil that they are breaking down. So generally, it's about every two to three weeks. I don't know, sorry, every three to four weeks whenever you're doing this. For me, it's probably every two to three weeks. And grow, plants grow a little bit faster, so I transplant a little bit sooner. Um, but let's say we were, uh, we've transplanted them from ones to threes, and the threes is as big as the pot that we're ever going to put them in. That's the real question is now, now that I'm not transplanting anymore, how do I know when to feed them? And there's a couple different methods we're going to use. One is just a strictly a time-based thing. We know that there's only about three weeks worth of food in these containers or into the new pot size uh, whenever you transplant them. And so we know around the three week mark, we're gonna really start needing to pay attention on if we need to feed or not. The other thing we're gonna do is we're gonna check runoff PPM numbers. And to do that, this pot would sit in a drip tray. Like, I don't know, use this pin box in our drip tray. And all you do is as you water through runoff, to runoff as you should be doing, you're gonna get enough runoff into here to where you can take your PPM pin, stick it in here, whoop, and then read the number of the runoff of PPM and uh, to see what's available in here. And generally my kind of rule of thumb is as soon as uh, my PPM numbers start to dip towards the 800 runoff, it tells me to trigger a feeding for the next watering. That's also size of plant dependent. Like if I have like those big six foot tall mothers that I have, I would never let them get down to 800 because it's nowhere near enough for a plant that will eat 700 PPMs a week. I mean, it's, you just wouldn't do it. So it's size dependent. You guys generally don't have to worry about that kind of stuff, but I do like to throw it in there because I like people to think about those kind of things where it's not just such a black and white answer. I know it might confuse the new people just a touch, but I just wanted to give them something to think about where it's, it, everything isn't just black and white. You actually have to start to think about the variables that you're talking about whenever you are doing, uh, you know, whenever you're growing these plants because they matter. And the more you can kind of think outside of the box when it comes to that, uh, the quicker you'll pick this up and the quicker you'll become a really, really, really good grower. And uh, then you don't ever have to go to the dispensary again. So uh, number one is time. Three-ish weeks, you really need to start paying attention whenever you're on the soil. Three-ish weeks, you really need to start paying attention. Number two is runoff PPM numbers. Remember, we checked in here. As soon as we see like 800 or getting close to 800, we know that the next watering, we're going to trigger a feeding. Now, if let's say you did this whoop, and you checked your runoff PPM numbers, you're a nice normal size plant, uh, and it said like 400, I would probably actually trigger a feeding that same day. So even if I just watered, and I'm like, oh yeah, we just watered. Well, now we got to wait a week before we water again. And the, the plant, let's say it only, you know, eats around three or 400 PPMs a week. You're going to run it out of food. The whole plant's going to start turning yellow. Uh, not going to be a good deal. So I actually will, if my, I wouldn't ever let my PPMs get that low, but let's say, you know, you just forgot about it and weren't paying attention. It happens. Uh, you're going to uh, run that plant out of food. And I would rather, much rather just feed it again. Because remember, we're not going to overwater by giving it too much in one day. Overwatering is something that happens day after day after day after day after day. And it's a, it's a cumulative effect. It's not an acute symptom. It's a chronic symptom. 
So I would much rather water it again that exact same day to get the food in there because I wasn't paying attention and you know you had a brain fart and you're like, oh man, I thought I fed these plants, but then it turns out you didn't. Um, now, I think that pretty much covers what, oh, well, wait, one more. And if we see the plant, let's just say to further expand on that, if we saw that the plant was starting to yellow, that means you really have been messing up on not feeding these plants because that is a late, late stage of them needing to eat. That means you are running out of a certain food that they are liking. So the plant is now stealing it from the plant or from its fan leaves to make up for what you were not giving it. So my three main things of when it's time to water or when it's time to water, when it's time to feed is number one, a timing issue. Uh, number two is runoff PPM scores. And then number three, so anything, as soon as I see 800 or below or 800, anywhere around 800, that'll trigger feeding. And then number three is if my plant actually starts showing up with deficiencies, which we've gone over that before, um, then uh, that'll also trigger feeding. So that's how I decide when it's time to feed. All right. I hope you guys all have a fantastic rest of your week. Hope you all have a great uh, holiday season coming up, whichever uh, holiday you happen to, uh, uh, what is it? Celebrate? Yeah, celebrate's a good word. Celebrate, and I'll see you guys next time. GT, out.